my but my way of approaching this subject is is tediously um, if you like formally democratic because let's just look at a minute at the s system that we've got <coughs> because it's better than Westminster which is rubbish we think it's great it's not great it's not proportional it's just a, ha a ham-fisted attempt at that the reason we have a second vote is to try to offset the unfairness that is stoked up in the first-past-the-post system. And because it was thought at the time that it was too big a leap for Scots to make to move from the, the notion of having this constituency link to having a more equitable system where everybody feels that their vote has been equally weighted. I think we actually need to move on from the system that we've got and have a properly proportional system in which this first and second votes would be irrelevant because most mature democracies get to the stage that you make, generally speaking, a vote um, in a way that allows you to say what you want. Now, if we're to get to the stage that we have to sort of second guess the outcome and then figure out what that might mean and then change our vote accordingly. Does that remind you of something? <laughs> Does that remind you of the tactical voting that we have to do every Westminster election? And where will this nonsense end? That you know what people's desires are and what their <coughs> strong feelings are are subsidiary completely to the expected outcome as divined by certain uh, sophologists who have been known to be wrong, even. I mean, come on. If we can't get to a stage where people are able to use the system that has been put before us in whatever flexible way they wish to do, then this is a nonsense. And we're actually no better and no more democratic than the Westminster system that we all claim to abhor. Leslie, do you think the other parties are being unambitious? No, they're, they're, looking at the f they're looking at the facts that come with the unfairness of the first-past-the-post system. I mean, there's going to be the winner takes all. And actually, there's been a, you know, a long period in which the SNP were the casualties of that. Yeah. For long enough, Labour were the ones that swept, just managed to pip every single seat. And whilst that represented a heck of a lot of SNP votes, it just didn't quite get over the line in any one of them. And that's why everybody, I think, has learnt to be extremely contemptuous of Westminster's continuing sort of need to have this archaic system at the root of our democracy. But it's sitting within our system too. And it means that smaller parties who can basically smell the coffee can see they're not very likely. Now, let's, let me give you an example. The BBC currently doesn't plan to let Patrick Harvey speak. How do you think you're going to win a constituency like that? We're still working on that. You know, still there's, there's all sorts of difficulties um, that flow from big parties, small parties, all these kind of things that are, in, that are actually generated by the two-vote system that we have. We also have a system, if you wanted to open it up, where it's not very clear, actually, sometimes how list MSPs work with constituency MSPs and what they're all doing. Well, could we ever discuss that? And if, if there is some desire to discuss that, because we could look at a wee update, because we've been using this for a tw 25, well, how long is it now, 20 years? So, um, you know, we could look at an update of it, but then you see everybody says there's more important things to discuss in a, in a Scottish election. What's more important than the very way that we do it? So I would like us to start discussing these things, again, as if we were a mature democracy that could choose and isn't so wedded to what's simply I been that we have to keep crocking it out every single time, no matter what sort of disturbances and, and uh, disorientation it causes.